we're going to look at the parameter editor. The parameter editor allows you to adjust the settings or parameters that control the operation of the marker. The parameters are logically grouped together on a number of tabs. The timing tab contains all of the parameters associated with the cycling of the bolt. The dwell, the first shot drop off compensation and the compensation delay. These parameters can be adjusted by clicking and dragging with your mouse or if you're using a tablet then you can use your finger to click and drag. You can use the cursor keys to make fine adjustments to the parameters. The filter tab contains all of the parameters that are used to filter out false readings from the breach sensor and trigger. The hardware tab contains all of the parameters associated with adjusting the electronics. The game timer contains all of the parameters associated with the game timer. The shot counter contains all of the parameters associated with the shot counter. The other tab contains parameters that don't fit anywhere else. A preset is a group of parameters that controls the firing mode of a marker. They control the rate of fire, rate of fire cap, whether the marker is in semi-auto or ramping, and if ramping, the specifics of how it ramps. The CS2 has 10 presets. When you first run ePortal, the factory default presets are displayed down the left of the tab. You can tell whether any particular preset is a factory preset by observing the factory preset radio button. If I make a change to this particular preset, you see that the button changes state. If I turn it back to the original value, then it regains its factory preset status. I'm going to create a new preset. I start by selecting one of the existing presets and I'm going to change the name to something a little more memorable. I'm going to call it my NXL. Now this preset is going to be used in an NXL league and so I need to set the rate of fire to a legal setting and I'm going to run quite close to the limit regardless of whether the breach sensor is on or off. All of the other settings are OK. So I'm going to save this preset because I may want to use it at a later date. In another marker. Now I want this preset to be at the top of the preset list so that when I'm searching for it in my CS2 I can find it easily and by clicking this button here I can promote the preset to the top of the list. At this point I can choose to save all of the presets in this order as a file. I also have the option to load previously saved presets but I'm not going to do that at the moment. So I'm going to connect my marker. You can see I'm connected here and then I can send these presets down to the marker and they've gone down there. If I wanted to get all of the presets from the marker I could use the get button here. I'm going to eject the marker Disconnect the cable and power up the marker. I can navigate to the preset and load my setting from the list. On the main screen you can now see that the factory preset icon has changed from a tick 
which would denote it was a factory preset, to a cross, because I've made changes. The factory button here can be used to restore all of the presets to the factory settings, but please note that it also restores all of the other parameters to the factory settings. Here you can see that the preset list has returned to its factory settings. In the next video, we'll look at editing splash screens.